Okay, good evening everyone. A rough week, right? Pretty cold outside. Yeah? Not today. Today is not cold, yeah, okay. I said rough week, not rough day. Yeah. Rough week, yeah. Rough week, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> rough week. Well, so, how many of you actually thought I'm going to be disproving Newton today? Wait, you are? I am, I am going to. Ah, okay, cool. Uh, so, I was thinking about this topic and, you know, disproving Newton's third law and stumbled upon something interesting and, you know, I, I guess it's a thought that I had. Um, <coughs> um, the entire course of this, uh, this semester, we have been going through chapter-wise Bhagavad Gita, right? We have gone through chapter 1 to 4 so far. Uh, some of them was taken by Ashodhana and then some by Mohito here and I did, I think I did one. It's even, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to quiz you guys, don't worry about it. Uh, but the, the general theme has been, you know, going through Bhagavad Gita chapters and conversation which is happening between Arjuna and Krishna, right? So this week it's going to be about you know, Newton's third law. And okay, so what I wanted to say was, you know, Newton actually did not coin this third law at all, in my opinion. He just rephrased the vocabulary, honestly. Who can tell me what is the third law? Every action has an equal number of Great. <laughs> very good. Does that sound very familiar in our terms? I mean, most of us are Indians here. Yeah. He is an Indian too, okay? Despite how he looks, I guess 100% Indian as well. <laughs> right? So, does that reaction part sound familiar? Like, what word? Karma, right? So he just changed the vocabulary altogether. It's the same thing. We are used to this. This is the age-old thing that comes with us. Karma. <laughs> right? And so he just gave a new like, term for it. Uh, so I'm just going to prove how karma, actually the action and the reaction that comes out. Well, okay, I'm not going to prove. I'm just, someone already proved it. I'm just going to repeat it. Okay? So I'm just going to show that how it happens. So to go through that, let's kind of just split it into three, okay? Like, let's understand what is karma and why we have to, why we want to, you know, not have karma acting on us in a way and how we get there. Because that's, that, 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 that's been the process that we have been doing during the entire semester, right? We take a topic, we kind of analyze through it, see what's happening and, you know, you guys are giving your valuable inputs and after that we just try to analyze it from there and see what goes and what works for us. And so far things have been working. So let's see how it works for this one. And so that's how I'm going to disprove Newton, okay? <laughs> if, if you're taking something, this is, this is the key takeaway that you're going to take away. Okay, so, okay. What is the first thing that hits your mind when someone says karma? The word karma, like what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Action. Action, okay. What else? In the present, okay. Next. That's all? Action? Present? Yeah. In, India, in India, karma is used for you know, result of uh, past mistakes. So, reaction. Reaction is okay? Okay. Action, reaction, okay. Especially bad. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I was waiting for. Reaction. Especially bad. <laughs> You know, you did a boo-boo, okay? <laughs> That's what karma is. You did a boo-boo. <laughs> you want to write that down? <laughs> okay, happy? <laughs> Are you happy? Okay? Are you happy now? Say good. 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 Reaction. Okay, reaction can also be good. Okay. Thank you. So, so what, what? I mean, tell me a word like boo boo for good. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing, right? So, uh, like, like someone said, we always associate karma with bad. You know what? It's, it's a bad thing. Like you. What is the famous saying? I don't want to go on mic with that saying. 
No, no, that's why I, I want someone else to say. I don't want to go on the mic with saying. What's the famous saying? Karma is a. <laughs> you guys have never heard? Wow, you guys are so innocent. Jeez. Yes, I'm very innocent. <laughs> sure, someone disagrees. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so usually we see it in a very bad limelight, you know, karma means, you know, it's something wrong, it always comes back to bite you. But here's the thing, action in general is what we coin as karma. Doesn't have to be a bad reaction that comes out to you, it also can be a good reaction that comes back to you. So, with that said, why do we not want the good reaction, right? Like, who here doesn't want a good reaction to happen to them? It doesn't want. Doesn't want. Okay. Everyone wants, right? Now, why do you think it is not ideal to have something good happen to you? What, what do you think might be a potential downfall over there? Okay, let's, let, let, let's work the other way around. So then we all agree that no one wants bad action to, be having, to occur to them, right? So why you don't want something bad happening to you? Like, duh, right? <laughs> just, just give me some ideas on why. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, yes. <laughs> We're not talking about the semester here, okay? <laughs> okay, yeah. It's it's generally uncomfortable and you don't want it and no one wants to put themselves in a pickle, right? Why do, why do you want to suffer? No one wants to. But part of that is that suffering is temporary. Like it's a phase. You do something and let's say something, you know, comes back to you. It doesn't last for your entire life. Right? It's a phase and you get over it. Maybe you did bad in a test and you got poor grades. But that grades just last for that particular semester or even it might be just particular midterm. Like if you do better in another midterm or your finals, that grades improves, right? And the same thing also applies to the good part. That good aspect that we get out of a good reaction also is very temporary. Even that has a high, that has a low. Now this high and low, this can also be framed in a different way called dualities. Like this week's weather is a classic example. Started cold, heading to warm. Huh? Like two ends of a spectrum. Dualities, right? What other thing is you think is dualities in life in general? Can you give me some examples? Happy, sad. Happy, sad. Yeah. Decisions. Yes or no. Sorry, what? Decisions. Decisions. Yes or no. Yes or oh, yes no. or no. Okay, cool. The idea is there is dualities everywhere. Like if you look somewhere, you will always find dualities. Sweet and sour. Sweet and sour. Yeah. <laughs> I have a joke about duality. Uh, Any one of you are computer science students here? Everyone. <laughs> uh, anyone focused on machine learning or something in particular? Yeah, dualities don't occur. Uh, uh, dualities don't work on these guys who do computer science majors. You know why? Because they exist in between the dualities. They always operate in between dualities. They say it's neither true nor false. They work on fuzzy logic. There is a logic called fuzzy logic. I don't know if you guys know about it. Yeah. But so what that logic applies is you know anything in between zero and one. That's where their entire life exists. But often case that's not that's not how our life exists. You know sometimes. It is very clear distinction where you know where the duality is set. It's not like oh, I'm 50% sad today, I'm 50% happy, or I'm 100% happy or 100% sad. That's how it works, unless you find a silver lining. Anyway, so that's that's the duality aspect, and you know we are gonna see why how karma and dualities are indeed somehow related. Okay. Uh, I just had a question. Since the duality of good and bad or comfortable and uncomfortable was uh, kind of a key premise. Could you just dis more describe what is meant by bad and what is meant by good? You mean from a reaction act activity perspective or? Yeah, like what, what, what is a bad reaction? Because sometimes oh, okay, cool. what appears bad is a blessing in disguise. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. Uh, okay, let me ask you, what's a bad reaction according to you? Exactly. <laughs> so, 
So that's 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 the problem, right? Because I can say, you know what? Um, getting a good grade is a bad reaction for getting a good grade is a bad reaction for me, because I, you know, I might have got it in a dishonest way. So that might have also been a bad reaction for me in a way, because okay, I got a good grade, but did I make any progress in life, or did I gain any valuable knowledge over there? No. So it's all about the perspective and the person that's going through that particular feeling or action or whatever that's happening to that person. So, you know, it might be easy for us as an individual to see from the outside and say, hey, you know what, that looks bad. But that might not actually be the case for the person that's actually going through it. And some of it actually has to do with how your consciousness is framed, right? Like, there might be a silver lining and it needs a particular type of consciousness for you to understand and see that silver lining. So, yeah, I guess it depends on your consciousness. So, actions cause karma, good and bad, and we understand that those are dualities. So, how do you escape from it? Ideas? Randomly. Hmm. <coughs> yes, that is one. <laughs> yeah. Well, how do we escape it? I don't understand. Well, okay, fine. Right, so, okay. Okay, so you get a reaction or because you did a certain action. So what if I tell you, you know what, I'm not going to do any action. I'm just going to sit like a doll. So will I still get a reaction? Or is that okay? Not okay. Why is it not okay? Who said? <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Krishna said, you know, Okay, and just because he said he is taking it, <coughs> you, so you, you you think just because you said Krishna said that I won't cross question you after that? <laughs> okay, so okay, he said don't sit idle. Okay, what did he ask you to do then? Do what is the right thing. What will you how will you know what is the right thing? I'm just pulling your leg. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, okay, so the thing is, okay, what if someone comes to you and says, you know what, because I'm doing some action, karma is there. I'm just not going to do any action, I'm just going to sit in the same place. Do you think that will work? Do you think you can escape life that way? What? I, I would challenge that person to say, how is it possible not to do something even if you're just sitting there? Because if you sit, you don't move, you don't eat, you don't Breathe. clean Breathe. yourself. You don't because yeah. it's like, so stuff is going to happen. And uh, like I would also like to tell something here. If the person is not doing something, he is actually contributing to something else. You know, for example, if he sits his duty in this place, somebody is bound to replace him, and you know, some dynamics are happening in the background. Yeah, exactly. So you just can't escape out of it. I mean, just because. True. It's True. I guess the way to frame it is inaction is also a type of action. And you know examples on where that happens, like say, you know, you are driving along the road and you just saw someone hurt on the roadside. Now you not helping that person, I mean granted we might not always be in a situation to help, um, but just for the sake of argument, right? You not helping that person is an inaction on your part, which is going to re result in a different kind of action that person might pass away. Or you might just feel very restless in your mind, you know, having seen some person, uh, another per uh, soul struggle for its life and you could not do something. And how many times have you guys seen that and felt that, hey, you know what, I don't know what happened to that person. Have you guys ever experienced that? I have. Yeah, I, most sometimes, you know, life just gets so busy and I'm just driving and I'm like, oh, no, what, I don't have time for it. Some other Samaritan will do this. And at the end of the day, I'm like, huh, what happened to that person? You know, so many instances like that. So that inaction is also causing an action in some way. So, oh. Well, I just wanted to say that, uh, that it's our, the way we're built, so our, our, posi our constitutional position is to do action. So yes. So we can't 
be inactive because we're, are, you know, it's like, think of an example, cars, <laughs> you know, it's supposed to drive, right? Mm -hmm. So sitting idly is really not its, uh, you know, its core uh, function, right? Right. So the right. core function is to act. So that's why it's so hard for us to sit. So right. Exactly. So, you know, to sum it all up, action, you do something, you get roasted. In action, you don't do something, you still get roasted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so what do you do? I, both sides, you just, you know, uh, it's, it's like none of them is a good deal, right? So wh what do you do? Just get roasted. Just get roasted. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where that's where our hero comes in, Krishna. No, your favorite guy. <laughs> that's where he comes in. No, he tries to you know kind of help us out of this, uh, and that's what the chapter five is all about. You know how we use our consciousness to do actions in our life so that we don't get these reactions. Um, so let's see how that happens, right? Oh, I have a question. Oh, so two questions. Can argue that, you know, if I do good actions, then I will uh, get good reactions. Yeah. And I will do further good actions, then I will keep doing, keep getting like further good reactions. So yeah. Should I great question. Try to escape? Exactly, great question. But how long is that thing going to last? How long? Like, can you, can you, like, can that person, uh, and just not you in general, but can that person actually guarantee and say that you know what? morning since I woke up until the end of the night I haven't done a single bad deed can that person hundred percent guarantee that no right like we kill microbes every time we breathe in breathe out there are microbes in the food and how many of us look through the floor when we are walking to see for ants or bugs or something no so right? then it can be further argued that well, I'm okay with a little bit of a bad reactions that come with small. So obviously, mm -hmm. killing little microisms is my reaction is not going to be as bad, right? Yeah. Whereas most times, I'm a pious person. I'm going to give to charity. Look at all the good I'm doing. Right. Uh, I'm opening the hospitals up. Right. Um, I'm going to teach for free. All these types of things. So mm -hmm. I could perpetually, if what you're saying is right, I'm going to continue to do majority of it good. So I can continue to have good karma. Great question. Okay. How many of you here knowingly have done some good deed? Can you quantify it? <laughs> In it you know what? You don't even have to quantify it. Like, you know what? It was 100% good or anything like that. Can you quantify it in like, it was a small good deed. It was a medium sized good deed. It's a large good deed or extra large, whatever. You know, however you want to call it. Can any one of you quantify it? Every, every person's capacity for right. is different. Exactly. So your capacity varies. Mm -hmm. So the degree in which you think you have done good varies. So why do you expect the return is also going to be the same way? So the return or however this law of karma works, that does not have to return the same amount of good deed in your capacity that has happened. Or it doesn't have to necessarily return its, its, its capacity. You know, we are just calling it it because we don't know how the law works. So the point is, you know, the capacity in which it's going to come back to you, you have no clue. You, know, you might have just saved an insect, but that might result you in be, you becoming a billionaire. <laughs> and you might have saved an insect and you might just get one penny out of it. So can you really quantify it? No. Or you can? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's one way of unconsciously we do that. Although, uh, if somebody just asks us, we, we may not be able to explain it, but I think that this is somewhat, you know, right. uh, a way that for us to quantify. It's not. So it's just. I have any idea exactly. So that, whatever you mentioned right now, which is a great point, but which is just to appease your heart. Yeah. Like, I did a good thing, you know, what I feel good about it at the end of the day before I go to sleep. Yeah. Actually, you wanted to say something, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the other uh, factor of, you know, oh, um, whatever I brought from my last life, you know, that continuum. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So how does that all factor in? Yes. <laughs> that's where the entire thing with... No, I guess that, that's where the hero comes in. <laughs> Krishna comes in and that's where he's telling us how this entire thing factors in. And it's a nice segue. Thank you so much. Uh, just like how we can't quantify what is the degree of good and bad. Have you guys done some actions or put in so much effort to life, to one particular aspect of your career or studies or whatever, and not got what you expected? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, so what do you think was missing over there? So are, uh, do, do we agree that that particular thing that you put your effort into is actually an action from your part? Yes. yes. Right, definitely, right? So you, let's say it was your science exam, whatever, okay. You put in effort, you know, you studied day and night, you took mock exams, you, you, you know, aced all your mock exams and you were confident. Has anyone had this experience where you go into the exam hall and like, oh, dang, I don't remember anything. Or at least this one question, like, you know what, I, I knew I read it, but for some reason, it's stuck here, it's not coming in front. <laughs> Has anyone had that thing? Yeah, why? Why? You know, you put in the effort, right? You gave mock exams, you studied that question. Now, why were you stuck? Might be the fear. Might be fear. Okay. Failure. Okay. And then I think that, and then we do bad in that exam, and the fear of failure is what we experience, and then right. we learn from it, and that's why that happens, or we got that. That's one aspect. Now, one, that might be a reason, right? Now, I tell you it's impossible to list out all the reasons on why that day went wrong for you, right? So that's the same thing that applies. Like we can't quantify how the law of karma works. Krishna has designed it in such a way that it... I can, I can give you one more example, like uh, it's not happened to me, but it was my sure. friend. Okay, uh, when I was in my plus two, okay, my friend actually, he, uh, he got selected into a a premier engineering institution, but he, he wanted to, you know, improve himself and, you know, get into a much better institute. So he came back again to coaching and, and he, he really used to ace all the exams, okay. But at the, in his first <coughs> exam, he actually did very well. Okay. He actually solved all the questions correctly. I mean, yeah, whatever, the way he does it. Okay, correctly, incorrectly, majority correct, whatever. But there was a particular thing what he did, you know, we have this funny OMR sheets, right? Oh yeah, On which I hate them. these things, right? Yeah. So, when he just did the uh, final question, he saw that there was no place to bubble. That means, he actually was <coughs> kind of, he, he was bubbling the right answer on the wrong question. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. <laughs> you know, that is the classic example of, you know, uh, of karma, you know, I have seen. I mean, wow. I yeah. was completely dazed when it happened. <laughs> can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I can't. Um, the amount of turmoil that person had to go yeah, through. Really, I can't. Yeah. I mean, I was completely flabbergasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, another example of you know, we can't list out all the things that actually go wrong on a particular day because we don't have access to those. We just don't know because we just don't, it's not under our, our control. You know, that's, that's the honest truth. It's not under our control for two reasons. One, we don't know what it is. And two, even if it were, you know, how would you even realize it's under your control? I, it's not possible, right? And I just lost my train of thoughts <laughs> because of this. Uh, what was this talking about? We can put in the effort, but the results may not match the Thank you. effort. Thank you. Yeah. So we can put in the effort, but the results are not going to match our effort that we put in. So why does that happen? So in those scenarios, what do you think we can do? Okay, we put in the effort, we didn't get what we want. What did you guys do in those scenarios? Frustrated. Get frustrated? Flip, throw a table around or something? Throw the phone around. Cry. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> don't overthink on the same Sorry, what? Just don't overthink on the things. Just don't overthink. Okay. So all of those are just coping mechanisms, right? 
is, is it okay for me to say you guys had a certain expectation for your actions and because that thing was not satisfied, you just lost it and you just wanted a way to vent it out, right? Essentially, that's, that's, that's the thing, right? Because when, when do we get disappointed? When we have a certain expectation for a certain thing and if it doesn't get satisfied, we get disappointed, right? So what if we change that expectation aspect to something else? What if you were detached of the result that you were expecting from? Let's say the same science exam, you gave your best, right? Are there scenarios where you felt like you didn't get the score that you wanted, but you still didn't feel so horrible inside? You weren't so frustrated. You were like, you know what? I still gave my best and I'm happy at the end of it. Have you guys ever had that experience? Yeah. Yeah, right? So what was the difference between these two scenarios? Like it's the same exam, but something was different, right? It's the consciousness, attitude, and you know, not being attached to the result. So that's what Krishna is trying to tell us to do in every aspect of our life. Simple, right? Sounds so simple. <laughs> now just don't, just be detached and you know, don't break your head if things just don't work out. Now, it's easier said than done and even Krishna knows that. <laughs> You know, that's, that's, that, that's why the rest of the chapters of Bhagavad Gita is there. Because Arjuna was not satisfied with this. He's like, hey, okay, dude, not working, okay? <laughs> I'm in chapter 5, you gave me an answer, not working. I'm going to drag you till 18. <laughs> that's how many chapters are there, okay? And he dragged till 18 because Arjuna was not satisfied with this answer. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't work, right? It's just not the ultimate thing, you know? Because it's a hard Right? To get our minds around. Yeah. We're, so, we're rewarded by our actions. Or not rewarded by our actions. Like, look at all of us. Like, you, uh, you know, your grades to monetary compensation at work or whatever, it's a direct result of your, quote unquote, your efforts, right? So exactly. It's hard. Like, it is. Sometimes, you know, you get bewildered even if you understand that concept of karma. Right. You still get bewildered and say, wait a minute, well, hold on. What? It wasn't me who did that. Like, who was it then? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, it does happen that way. So that's why Krishna is. Sorry? Yeah, I was saying most of the times they were uh, actions are motivated by the anticipation. By reward, right? Like uh, it's either the greens that come at the end of it or more of a personal satisfaction. Like, you know what? I managed to do this. Yeah. You know, like, you know, how many of you ever thought that, you know what? I want to run a marathon and I actually did that. Okay, 5K, not a marathon. Okay, so what motivated you to do that 5K? You just wanted to, that, that aspect that where you felt like, you know what, I achieved something, right? And it gave you a, a moral boost and a confidence to go on with your life. Like, you know what, checkbox, another thing in my, uh, you know, list of achievements, right? I was saying, that's, that's, that's not necessarily bad, but what tends to happen is, when it doesn't work out, we get into the zone of, you know what, I'm not good enough, you know what, I'm... I'm just not talented, you know what, it's just, it's just a bad day. We just go into this negative zone, negative space, where we just get stuck in there and it takes a while for us to come out. At least for me it has happened a lot of times than I can actually uh, want to admit to. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it has happened a lot of times to me. And that's where I started to change my consciousness and my mindset in how I deal with these things. Where at the end of the day, I just sit and try to understand, did I give it my best? At the end of the day, your goal, or at least we try, let's, let's try to make this our goal. It's not, we should not aim to be the best, but let's try to give our best. And if our best gets us to the best, amazing. If not, don't hit your head against the wall. Sorry, bang your head against the wall. Okay, it's okay. You know, there is always another time, another chance. And you know why I say there is always another chance? Arjuna in the middle of the battlefield, he had time to stop and ask Krishna, hey dude, what, I, what should I do? You know what, I'm, I'm in this crisis right now. Like I have to fight my family and friends. Okay? I, my hands are shaking. Now I'm not able to hold my bow anymore. What the heck am I going to do? Now tell me what to do. I can tell you 99% of the time, we are not in Arjuna's shoes. 
no one pointing a gun to our head nothing of that sorts our lives are not as i guess eventful in a sense as arjuna's <laughs> you know we we still have a day you know you, there there is always at least 24 hours for you to go back and revisit a decision 99% of the times so instead of always reacting to a situation whenever something is presented to you try responding to it you understand the difference don't react but try to respond reaction is when you just act on impulse and like you know what there is a deadline right now and i have to finish it or whatever it may be something but instead of doing that where you are driven by emotions and heightened senses just calm down pause take a deep breath you know do some pranayama if you are if if that works for you for a few people it's a jog for a few few people they try to go to the gym where it helps them to relax so do that and you know i guess take your mind off that problem and take a revisit it you know and who knows another option might actually show up like another choice another solution to the current problem that you are facing might actually show up when you are actually you know taking a pause and revisiting it again yeah so that helps at times uh so the main thing is try to do your best and when things don't work out your way you know don't don't break your head so in success don't be over elated and you know go to the moon and like you know what i am the king of the world no one can beat me my code runs flawlessly you know i am an insane great programmer or something like that and when something doesn't work don't be like you know what i am the worst programmer in the world i have zero skill sets or something like that just don't go to the dualities see how it links over here just don't go to the two extremes over here try to be in the center try to be equipoised and take both success and failure normally you know that way you don't burn out also now i i really liked how you had made that distinction with consciousness when talking about good and bad to the point that you're closing with because it really is a matter of choice also oh, you want me to stop after this okay cool if you want me to stop no, no, i'm no, stopping no 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 sorry i i i was missing it i i was appreciative of how you were just saying that in relation to the consciousness point because there is a large element that having that understanding in the like gita to help really orient it because you're saying stay in the middle but sometimes these situations are just very challenging or yeah. very joyful and it's it's hard to stay in the middle yeah 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 exactly so that, that's a good point like you know I don't mean like okay you know what you get a million dollars I don't want to be like huh it's a million dollars okay Krishna told me to stay in the middle you know that's 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 not how <laughs> you know let, let's be honest even if I got a million dollars I'm not going to react that way I'm probably going to be jumping around like a monkey okay <laughs> and I'll cry later after I pay the tax on that <laughs> well the thing is you know give room for yourself to have that enjoyment where you you know feel that elatedness but don't get into this doership mentality where you're like you know what it is because of my efforts that i managed to get there and that's how it happened because we just revisited the point where you know when things don't go right sometimes there is providence or luck or fate or the universe whatever you want to call it there is another there are a bunch of other factors that are involved when things don't go right your way and just know that those factors are also involved when things go right your way so you know it's not just always you that's pushing forward there are other forces in addition to you that's pushing you forward now if you ask me you know what can i just let these other forces do the job and while i sit in the middle and not do anything that's inaction and that's no good because that's not going to help us in any way now this is more or less now i i would still say that whatever i said till now it's still kind of why and what we still didn't kind of touch on you know how like how do we get to this zone right and there is this inter- interesting concept that i found in a book where it talks about circle of influence and circle of concern mm. okay i want to try do my best to draw a circle okay <laughs> not bad <laughs> okay this is worse 
Aduh, okay. Uh, circle of influence. What I should have used different colors like you did. It'll look nicer. <laughs> there you go. Okay, cool. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Yeah. Well, okay. Let's 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 look at it, right? Um, what do you guys think is circle of influence? Shut up, okay. <laughs> See, there's, there's no one blocking you. You are straight in front of my vision. And you weren't so, so you weren't whispering actually. I know, but you weren't whispering, just so you know. <laughs> Like I just saw circle of influence looked at her, shut up. I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> We're making fun of you, that's why everyone's laughing. You guys want to take a jab at what do you think fits in the circle of influence and circle of concern? Shut up. Let, 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 okay, circle of influence, okay, circle of my influence, okay, let, 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 let me make that clear, okay, so this is circle of my influence and this is circle of my concern, uh, what, what you're bringing up is a very valid point, uh, but by influence I meant actually something, because we're talking about everyone's individual actions uh, in day to day life, I'm talking about whatever is under your influence in, in a sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. So, circle of influence is, you know, before my kids are 18 years old, I can tell them what to do. <laughs> okay? <laughs> After they're older, it's an area of concern, but I can't do that. <laughs> you add till 18 to control them? <laughs> so I go from influence to con just concern. It's <laughs> a good one. Right? Now you're scaring that guy. <laughs> Uh, they, they walked out of the circle of influence. <laughs> yeah, they walked out of the influence. So, so here's the thing, right? Uh, circle of influence, it can be your health, your finances, your education, in certain aspects, your grades, or you know, what, what, whatever you want to put. Like some things that you have direct control over, like you suggested, that falls under circle of influence. Circle of concern, you know, let's just be crazy. World climate. Can anyone of you raise your hands here and say, you know what, I can change the world climate? You can? You're nodding your head like this. So, world climate, maybe world economy. Um, you know, something that's on a really larger scale and that doesn't fall under your control essentially. Yeah. My family. <laughs> Are they above 18? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. It's interesting when you're talking about like world climate, world economy, and all these other events that are much larger than the individual. That, like, that occupies so much, let's say, 
reading time or hearing time, like on the news or different publications, is filled with topics that I can't affect. I remember growing up at family parties, a few of my relatives would get so into just talking about politics and arguing about politics, and like, neither of them. I, I just, even at a young age, I remember just thinking about that, like, it doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes sense, right? That's why I never got into politics because, you know, it's just talk at the end of it and you can't really, I guess, do anything. Uh, anyway, let's not be so morose. <laughs> uh, let's, let's look at the circle of influence, okay? Because that's the thing that we can control. So, practically, what we can do is, let's take the science test example, right? Whatever you read and all those, falls under circle of influence and you know maybe fate universe whatever uh, like you forgetting something that falls under circle of concern now which one of these two things you, you think you can actually control influence right so does it really make sense to you be concerned about what's then circle of concern Mm -hmm. Like, uh, there is, like, yeah. So, if you think of changing, if you one person thinks of changing, like, so, uh, it is highly important. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, if, just imagine if a lot of people are to apply the same concept in their lives and make adjustments to their circle of concern and circle of influence, it creates a much larger impact, right? Same thing applies in our actions too. So, for example, let's 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 uh, let's for the sake of conversation, right? Do you guys agree that racism is a type of action that's taken against people, right? So, if that action was done with consciousness, and what we learned in previous chapters on everyone is a human and who has a spirit soul, do you think racism will exist in the world? If those actions that they are constantly doing were to be brought under their circle of influence, which is under their control, you know, let's be clear, right? It is under their control, right? So, and if they had that consciousness, will there be races? No. That can be said. So, great point. The same thing is said for environment. If we, as an individual, do our best to keep the environment concerned in, the, in our circle of influence, that will generate an impact and if enough number of people do it, it's going to generate an impact, right? Now, what happens is most of the time when we are operating, because life gets so busy and we are just, let's be honest, there's just million things that we want to do. We are always multitasking, you know, that from the moment we wake up, we watch something and we eat breakfast, at least I do, because, you know, that's, that, that that helps, you know, I go through my WhatsApp to see what messages I miss from my friends in India and all those. And it's just, the entire day is just multitasking for us, you know. And few people are good at it, most of us, including me, no. Because my attention is split up and just doesn't work. So, what happens is, because I'm so multitasking and I might not be focusing enough, instead of acting on things in my circle of influence, I keep worrying about things on my circle of concern. Now, okay, I'm not talking about global crisis or anything. There are certain things in my life which I can say are not under my influence, you know, but it's under my circle of concern. It's not outside the circle either, unfortunately. It is not inside the circle either for me to make a difference to it. It just resides here. And you know what this gap is? That's where our frustration lies. Exactly, right? I can't control the workload that my boss gives me. I can say, you know, if it gets too much for me, but this, the amount that he has set for me, I can't really change it, right? And I can't change the company's timelines or your final exam dates. Like for you guys, you, you can't change your final exam dates or who your professor is. You know, it's the, what the university applies to you. You're just, you know, stuck with that, right? Now that falls under your concern, but what can you influence in those situations? How well you prepare for that semester? How well you plan your day that is leading up to your final exam? 
how well you try to you know read on your own if you don't like your professor how well you try to read on your own those fall under your circle of influence and here's the funny part have you guys heard the wolf story the good wolf bad wolf story right the same thing applies over here whichever circle you pay more attention to that grows so you pay attention to your concern your concern keeps increasing and funny part things that were here end up here because this peer starts to go down so try to focus as much as possible in your circle of influence and act in a way that you are not hit by dualities and that way your circle of influence grows up and as it grows as you practice it i'm i'm not saying it's going to be an overnight miracle where you just you know hey you know what i've in increased my radius by 10 cm or something that's not going to happen okay let's be honest but it, with practice we can do that and when that happens the inverse happens where something over here might actually start ending up being here you can still be under your influence in certain way you know like how if you ask me how like say for example you know a circle of influence you become a very eminent professional or a, a great speaker and you are able to inspire millions of people and you inspire millions of people to take care of the environment see you made a big impact your influence increased right so it does work and that's how you know we we take our actions try to do our best identify which actions are in the sphere of influence for us over here and work on them oh. you for questions you do this for how you do this uh, well yeah that's that's all i had to say if you guys have any questions you guys want to discuss something add more points i'm happy to listen this food isn't here yet <laughs> Mind we forget. <laughs> Essentially, we forget. <laughs> right. So one of the things that I wanted to bring up was you, know, you talked about. So Krishna's example is a very extreme example of a king fighting for his kingdom, right, between his families. So it's, to us, it seems like, oh my God, it's war between two countries. We can't really relate. Mm -hmm. But how we can relate is um, based on who we are and what we're trying to accomplish. You know, without getting into like exactly. Uh, Let's just in these days it's more like about professions and where you're at. To you, to me, it feels like the same thing that Arjun was going through, right? Because it may not be an actual war, but it's a big deal to me. I've got people relying on me. My parents have sent me here to America to study, and and I've got to make sure that I show good grades and things like that. So it's a existential, you know, crisis for me. if i don't do as well mm -hmm. as i'm supposed to so to me it might as well be a war because yeah. it's that big of a deal right 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 so we can apply it in, exactly. in our lives because we do get all worked up <laughs> right <laughs> uh about things that may be small to rasa rasa thinks it's no big deal but to me it's a huge deal right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i just wanted to make that point that we all have our own battlefield Um, on battlefield that we have to sometimes we get we get flustered and bewildered of what to do yeah right and so if you think of it that way um, it helps to kind of it does really apply the gita to your life it does you know and you know, uh, i th i think i mentioned this last time as well it's about how you see the problem right if you keep the problem here the problem is all going to going to see if you just step back a little take a breather like don't act if you respond to the situation you will you will see more options to respond to the problem you won't be reacting to it you'll be responding to it uh, a, a funny joke like uh, apparently there was this monk who was preaching a similar since you mentioned about arjuna and the parallels of how you know even metaphorically even we are at war yeah. every day in our lives you know with you know our work our studies whatever it may be our right lives. so this person who's a family man uh, Okay, I think that's a different kind of war. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, so this person, uh, he's talking to this uh, saint of such, and he's like, you know what, you don't have a family, you don't have any friends, you don't have to make a living because you can live off of other people's donation. So it's easy for you to preach all this. When, when I'm the one who has a family, I have to go to a 9 to 5 job, I have kids to take care of and all those things. And that saint had never uh, had someone tell him like that because he's a saint, right? Like he has always, people have always taken his word for granted. And he was flustered. Like he didn't know what to say. And then he paused for a bit and he reflected on the Bhagavad Gita. And he was like, you know what? What you are saying is right. I don't have any of the problem. But Arjuna had. He is a king. He had an empire. He had a life. He had kids. He had brothers. And heck, he had to fight a war. He still managed to make time listen to Krishna and apply it in his life, right? So if he can do it, metaphorically, your life, which is very similar to his, you can also try. I'm not saying that you have to, but at least you can try and try to give your best at the end of it, right? Because that's all we can do, honestly, you know, try to give our best and hope it works. And most of the time, it does work and sometimes it doesn't. And at those times, just don't get depressed and feel sad and bummed out. You know, life still moves on. Take, I'm not saying, you know what, if you, if you take a low blow, something, don't, I, I'm not saying to ignore that emotions that you're feeling over there and just get up and start walking, you know, just man up or something like that, or woman up in this case. I don't, I want to be gender neutral. Uh, <laughs> Well, honestly, women, women take more than men, okay? That's true. Uh, but anyway, the thing is, you know, I'm not, I'm not asking you guys to do that. All I'm saying is, you know, take time to, you know, go through your emotions. It's okay. If you want to cry, cry. If you think something is going to help you go through it, uh, you know, like you want to take a day off, you just want to binge Netflix, sure, do it. But don't be stuck on that, you know? Come out of it after a point. You know, you just don't have to be stuck in that for like, you know, months together where you just sulk over and over and over. Oh, it didn't go the way I wanted. Oh, yeah, my life was done or something. No, it's not. Uh, it's a new day. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, I'm not sure if this is interrupting, but I wanted to go back to this topic of, um, from Stephen Covey because um, from his example, what he's saying is, only work in your circle of influence and what happens in your circle of concern mm -hmm. you have to accept the outcomes and not be you know not focus on it but accept the outcomes knowing that it's outside of your influence, influence. it's outside of your control mm -hmm. and the best way to deal with it is to just accept the outcomes so that's what he says now bringing that back to the Bhagavad Gita and the action, reaction, and the karma and everything. So basically you were saying is, in the circle of my influence, whatever action I perform, I'm going to get, get a reaction, mm -hmm. right? However, whether that reaction is good or bad, you know, the outcome is actually outside of my control, so it's part of my circle of my, uh, circle of my concern. Right. And so when, when that happens, at that point, I need to apply my consciousness mm -hmm. to uh, understand that no matter the outcome, I gave it my best, right. and it's um, beyond my control. There's all these other factors out there, right. um, the universe, etc. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I should be happy that I just did my best within right. my circle of influence. Is that, is that applying it correctly? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, that that does sound right. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for you paraphrased it very beautifully. <laughs> uh, so but does yeah. that resonate with people? I, step, I, mean, I have a question. So what do we get when we start thinking like that? You tell me. <laughs> 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 well, no. So I mean, I'm I'm not a pro. Okay, I'm practicing as much as you guys are. Uh, what I can say in my life, at least from my experiences, what I've got is. My, the amount of time I spend in my lows have reduced drastically and the amount of times I am on my high horse has also reduced drastically. I am the type of person who gets very proud. I am like, oh, if I do something great, I am like, oh yeah, I am the king of the world. <laughs> it's, I, I don't know. So I, I, I was a spoiled brat, okay? That's, that's the truth. I was a spoiled brat. Uh, <laughs> uh, but 
you know, I'm starting to realize that, you know what, that's not how you lead your life, you know, like, okay, like, what, what am I going to get, like, being like a king and looking down on people, nothing, and what am I going to think, like, you know, looking up people like this, nothing, and how it has helped me is, you know, it has helped me stay neutral throughout the, all these ups and lows in my life as I've gone through, and knowing that I've given my best at that particular circumstances with my current life scenarios and everything, you know, that's, that's the best I could have hoped for and got. And I'm grateful for the things that worked out my way. And I'm grateful for the things that didn't work out my way either. My way too, not either. My way too. Because all of those taught me valuable lessons on how I can't achieve success that way. You know, I can always say, you know what, it was in my circle of concern. It didn't matter or something. But looking back at it, all of those taught me valuable life lessons as well. And I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that me standing at this point in time and space is because of all of my success and failure. Like me as a person right now is complete because of both. If someone were to say me, oh yeah, because of your failures, you know, if, if not for your failures, you will be a, you know, like a much successful person, I would argue I'm not. Because I don't know what failure means at that point. And I will be afraid, terribly afraid, <laughs> to get my first failure at this point in life, so far into life, I am 27, like 27, I have first failure in life, I'm like, God, can you, can you imagine how, you know, scary that is? You know, imagine like, everything that you have done in your life, you have always succeeded, like any tournament that you have gone to, chess tournament, tennis tournament, dancing competition, singing, whatever, you have always succeeded, now imagine that. So, yeah, it has taught me a lot of things mm -hmm. and that's how it has helped me maintain my sanity in a way too. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if that helps you. No, no, it does. It, you know, because the point I wanted to just talk about a little bit and see if it's helpful for everybody else is, you know, when we worry about like why, why, why do we need to be spiritual, right? Why is God important for anything like that? So he gave a very practical example, right? And then... Um, because it actually helps you to traverse this world and life that we're going to go through in a, in a, uh, uh, a better way, if you will, so you won't have the highs and ups and downs, right? And then the best part about it is the opposite is it's also, you're also spiritual at the same time and you don't even know it. So when people think of spirituality, that's always been one of the things for me is you think of rituals, RP, right? We grew up with RP, those types of things. But this in itself, following this, what Kartik is saying, is also spiritual practice. So that's really a pretty big, you know, when you think of it that way, you're like, wow, is that really? <laughs> so. Cool. Any questions? Okay, great. Uh, I think we'll yeah, transition to the... Can you just tell me how we are defining Newton's third law? Well, the entire thing is, there is no reaction at this point. And the part is, you are not affected by the reaction. Like Newton's third law is, you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And in this case, if you are not affected by the reaction, then it's more or less like the reaction is passing around you. you know? It's not hitting you in anymore. The reaction is going through you. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're phasing through the reaction, you know. So, yeah. This goes in, this is, this is the legendary day, okay? <laughs>